All right, so when you think of electric cars, you probably don't think of fun. You probably think of fuel economy, you think of, well, getting stranded somewhere, going to work. But right here, the first very fun and affordable electric car. Coming up next on the Fast Lane Car. All right, I bet you're wondering what's under the hood. Well, of course, under the hood of the Fiat 500e is an electric motor which puts out 111 horsepower and 147 pound-feet of torque. And you can really feel that torque when you floor it because the wheels will actually spin. Unfortunately, the power kind of falls off the cliff if you stay in the power band. Now, all that power is good for 87 miles of range and it'll take about four hours if you're lucky enough to have a level two charger to recharge it, otherwise all night. By the way, if you're a speedster, top speed of 88 miles an hour, which of course is completely illegal, so I wouldn't know anything about that. And here comes 50, and here comes 60. There we have it. I got 9.92 seconds. Now, huge, huge grain of salt. Once again, two people in the car, very impromptu. I would love to have a closed road to do this on, but with these drive events, it's just not doable. So, um, I think it's a little faster, but not much. You could choose a 40 mile per gallon pop at $199 with $999 due at signing for 36 months. Or, pick a battery electric for the same price. Either one gets all the benefits I talked about earlier, the standard navigation, the smartphone app, the enterprise rental car, and we're going to give them the same option. Which is better for you? Our goal from Fiat has always been accessibility. How do we widen that net? How do we get more people to embrace things? How do we get more people to like the Fiat brand or enjoy the Fiat brand or all the things that we're known for? So we're gonna make it very easy. You want a 199 payment for an electric or do you want a 199 payment for a 40 mile per gallon pop? Your choice. Inside the 500 is well, just like any other Fiat 500, which means European and very tight. The materials are nice, if somewhat plasticky, but keep this in mind, I'm 6'2 and my head does not fit, especially on the passenger side, which is a little bit taller than the driver's side. When you buy the 500 e you get standard the TomTom -tom navigation system. And that's because on the TomTom, -tom, there'll be a circle which will actually tell you how much range you have before the battery power runs out. There's also a unique gauge cluster which gives you power, which gives you range, and a whole bunch of other features. And finally, this is kind of odd, it's a key. Because when you plug it in and turn the key, you hear that? Nothing happens. You're expecting the starter to come to life, but instead all you get is a beep and a push button transmission. So you step on the brake, press P, and away you go. It's a 83 kilowatt motor. Uh, that's 111 horsepower, 147 foot-pounds of torque available at launch. So there's no torque curve, it's the flat line as you take off. We actually have to blend in the power so you can keep rubber on the ground. All right, so here's the thing about electric cars. When you have a combustion engine, you have, just like people, different personalities, right? Some combustion engines are very powerful, some are very fuel efficient. An electric motor, well, it's an electric motor. It's got a set amount of torque and a set amount of RPM and it really well feels like any other electric motor so it really depends on how the engineers set up the torque and in this car when you floor it you get a lot of power like right there and then it kind of just falls off a cliff especially when you're on the highway there's not a lot of passing power and with a top speed of only 88 miles an hour you feel like well you feel like you're in one of those older 70s Datsuns but you know no one's buying this car to go zipping around a racetrack. This is a commuter car 
and for that it does just well. In terms of structural solidity, it's heavy and you can feel that weight. And I think the tires are set up to be low resistance to give you as much possible distance per charge as you can go. So that means that they're not exactly grippy. If you're wanting to buy a car that performs, go for the Fiat 500 Abarth. But if you want a car that's obviously a commuter, that's ecologically friendly, and that's zippy and stylish, well then go for the 500E. But this is no sports car. Now style-wise, I bet you'll have a hard time distinguishing the 500E, except for the badge, from a regular 500, but there are differences. This car is much more aerodynamic. In fact, it's so much more aerodynamic that Fiat will tell you that they got 3% more range out of the car when they tweaked the aerodynamics of it, which includes a longer rear spoiler. In terms of cost, $32,500, but here's the interesting part. You can lease this car for $199 a month now that is a pretty inexpensive way to get into an electric car. Hot batteries don't like to be charged, it destroys their life. Cold batteries don't want to give up any energy, right, because of the sluggish in this chemistry, right? We have active chilling and active heating of this system. So in the extremes, or even during operation, if, if the temperature of the air starts creeping up, we actually start actively cooling it to bring it back down to where it's very, very comfortable. Um, this actually helps us guarantee that the car will always behave the same no matter what the temperature out as far as acceleration and range and have very long life. The Fiat 500e is surprisingly roomy for such a tiny little car. It will seat four adults. Of course you don't want to go cross country. And with the seats up there's actually room for a nice sized backpack. With the seats down I've gotten my bike in here. Very surprising. It is much heavier than the standard 500, 600 pounds because of the battery pack. And and this is a big butt. If you live anywhere but here in Southern California, well, you're out of luck because initially Fiat's only selling them in